gonna mug me. I'm not gonna mug you. Is that gorgeous or what, eh? And I believe I can run the Peace and Marathon. Download Veely now. Two-year-old Vicky Zuckabit seems to have it all. Married to her high school sweetheart, she lives in a beautiful home in Swindon and juggles raising their two-year-old daughter with running her own business, selling healthy food supplements. But behind closed doors, she's hiding a guilty secret. Vicky is addicted to cheese. My love for cheese is just something I've had since I was a child. After 28 years of bad eating, Vicky can now only eat cheddar cheese sandwiches or cheese and tomato pizzas. Having a plate of vegetables put in front of me, it's like having dog poo on a plate. Her addiction is so severe that woe betide anyone who stands in the way of her cheesy fix. Pizza. Helping Vicky combat her addiction will be psychological coach Felix Economakis and nutritionist Charlotte Watts. They've got just four weeks to reverse over 28 years of bad eating. Too much too soon. Mm. I need to get some cheese. It's an extreme case. I feel like an alcoholic. That requires extreme intervention. You're going to be up there where that lady is. Will Vicky be up to the challenge? What do I want you to do? Two year old Vicky Zukavitz has two loves in her life. The first is her family, two year old daughter Ella, and her partner of five years, Damien. The second is cheddar cheese. I get through a packet of cheese every single day. It's always been my life, really. For over 28 years, Vicky has lived on a cheese based diet, refusing to even try vegetables, fish, or meat. Vicky, when pushed, her barriers go up straight away, and Vicky tends to push in the opposite direction out of sheer bloody mindedness more than anything else. Digging her heels in also extends to the couple's social life. Vicky refuses to eat anywhere other than in her own home. And even a takeaway is a problem, unless it's round with cheese on. It smells oily. Okay, right. Really so, what do you think of this? This is the, um, the special fried rice. Um, don't like this sort of stuff. Don't like it, it's got veg in. That looks like it's come out of the bin. <laughs> <laughs> it just looks absolutely disgusting. It looks horrible. It's try beans, bro. No. No, 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 no. Pea? No. Damien, no, 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 it's all this stuff. If it was a pea on its own without... No. One pea. No. husband, Damien, it's a case of opposites no, attract. Like I'll give you ten here if you eat one pea. <laughs> <laughs> My relationship with no. food is completely yeah. different to Vicky's. I truly, truly enjoy to eat uh, and eat well. Um, I think it is one of life's little pleasures. With Vicky failing to share Damien's love of food, family life is now seriously under threat. How can you eat them? Because they taste good. Pork chops taste good. Bacon tastes good. Yeah. Married last year, Vicky refused to go on honeymoon, and despite five years of trying, Damien still can't get Vicky to eat out. <laughs> for our anniversary, we wouldn't go out for a meal. I don't know what we'll do. Probably get Domino's pizza in. <laughs> But with three-year-old daughter Ella eating more than mum, there's a real need for change. I miss out on so many things, and I, and I don't want my daughter to notice and start picking up bad habits from me. I have to do something about it. It's day one of a month-long dietary makeover for Vicky. <laughs> She's in London to meet the experts who will be helping her confront her food fears. Hi. Hi Vicky, I'm Phoenix. Nice Hi, Vicky. So, Vicky, how are you feeling about being here? I'm really, really nervous today, actually. OK. So we'll start by taking you in here and showing you something. You ready? Yeah. OK, let's go. To kick things off, Charlotte and Felix have arranged a wake-up call from Vicky's family and friends. Right, Vicky, the next four weeks are going to be really tough, but you're going to have our help and support along the way. But what we really need you to be able to do, and we're not there to help you, is dig deep. So we want to show you something today, just to keep with you as, as a source of inspiration. Okay. 
Good luck, Vicky. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Vicky. After putting me through all this, I hope at the programme's end that we'll be able to sit down and have a good cooked meal together. Hi, Vicky. I just wanted to say um, I am slightly concerned that Ella does look to you as a role model and so she might be picking up on the kind of food that you're eating which could have um, a negative effect on her in the long term. Hi, Vicky. I just wanted to say well done for taking this step. Um, you're definitely making the right choice. How nice it would be for us to be able to be a family unit and do the other things that families need to do and do together without the planning that goes into it or the limitations that we have in place. So I love you, dig deep and stick with it. And I'd like to see you when you come from the other side. Hi, Vicky. Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> how, uh, how was that for you, watching it? It was uh, it's everything that I know, but obviously when it's put in front of you, it sort of reiterates the problem mm -hmm. and that everyone knows it's a problem for me. So do all the comments about Ella and her health and seeing you as a role model, is that something that you feel really motivates you? Absolutely. You know, I, I'm not in a position to just play around now. Um, if It's always like the, the dual die card has been dealt to me. If I don't try now, I will we'll never change. Well, we've got a, a lot of work ahead of us now, Vicky, so are you ready for it? Yep. Well, let's begin. OK. Let's go. Felix and Charlotte have organised a surprise for Vicky. One that they hope will shock her into action. Come this way. <laughs> Look at this. What a waste of pizzas. <laughs> We've taken a look at your diet, done a few calculations. In total, you eat 550 pizzas a year, <laughs> which, quite frankly... Is a lot of pizza. ..and makes me feel slightly <laughs> nauseous. It does look absolutely terrible. And smells. And smells really yeah. bad. And one of the things that's predominant about this is the amount of, of cheese on top. But this mm. is not the only cheese that you're eating in your diet. I mean, Vicky, you eat a twelfth of this every month. A twelfth is, is a huge chunk of this, and the idea of having to sort of wade through that seems like an ordeal to me. Is this a year then? Yeah. This is a year. <laughs> how does I mean how does that make you feel looking at that? It's very solid, isn't it? Makes me feel sick to smell. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah, you can smell yeah. it, smells it smells like fat, doesn't it? It does, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. you're right. Yeah, it does smell like fat. I think we need to just maybe further illustrate that point. <laughs> <laughs> we lead wow. you over okay. here. What, what is do you that? Think this is? Ew. Ew. Oh. That's disgusting. It's like pus. It is like pus. Well, this is pure animal fat. And we worked out that this is a, the amount of animal fat in your diet over a year, which is twice as much as a healthy person should be consuming. That looks putrid. Oh. Yeah. So we've got a lot to be working with here, and I need you to remember all of this. Yeah, you wait till my husband sees this. I'm never going to live it down now. <laughs> <laughs> I think today's exercise really shocked Vicky. She only shops for pizzas daily to avoid seeing how much she actually really eats. And the accumulation of what she eats is truly appalling to see in its entirety. To have that kind of diet for some 28 years suggests a very strong-willed person. And I haven't seen that yet, but I expect some resistance, some controlling behavior. So I still think we've got a lot of work ahead of us. <laughs> 24 hours later and Vicky is still coming to terms with the truth about her appalling diet. I went to bed and it was just mulling over this information and I just couldn't stop thinking about the lard, the cheese, the pizzas. And I was nearly physically sick quite a few times last night. I just couldn't sleep. It made me feel so poorly. 
um, that I think it actually did more, you know, affected me more than I actually realised. Um, I really want Vicky to succeed at this. Uh, it's, it's crucially important that she does um, for all our sakes. I mean, for her more so than anybody, but also for, for Ella and uh, for me as well, I guess. Vicky was born into an affectionate, loving family in Ebervale, South Wales. A middle child, she was a real daddy's girl, but at the age of three, she began to show the first signs of an eating problem. She was very stubborn. She always wanted her, her way or no way at all. So that was a, a little bit of a difficulty. That she would never sort of toe the line. Vicky's father worked away from home, so it was left to her mum, Eleanor, to try and get her to eat. They had the same personalities, which meant they continually disagreed about everything. I just remember lots of arguments. I was just being fussy. I was just trying, you know, being a little madam, and everyone was all so frustrated with me. At age nine, Vicky began retreating from family mealtimes, choosing to eat in her room by herself. When we had family <coughs> meals, her meals were always, yeah, always very separate from ours. As she became a teenager, that's when she became more stubborn um, and would decide on what she wanted to eat. When Vicky left home, her relationship with her mum improved, but her eating deteriorated. Sadly, Vicky's mum died three years ago and never got to see her daughter eat a full meal. In less than a month, Vicky will face her final challenge, her first meal out in years. Charlotte wants to kickstart her dietary makeover, so has sent her some homework in the form of a healthy hamper. We need you to wean you off your favourite food, cheese. Start by clearing all the blocks of cheese from your fridge. <gasps> now, in here is Mummy's cheese. Mummy's not allowed cheese anymore. And that one? Well done. Bit gutted because it smelled really nice when I threw it away. Um, but it's got to be done. So I've got rid of all the cheese in the house. So it better be a good replacement. <laughs> what was this? I don't know. <laughs> To replace her cheese-free fridge, Charlotte's provided a hamper of fresh vegetables to eat over the next week and has even suggested the first recipe of carrot and swede mash. Mummy's got to put some carrots, look, and some swede and make mash. What do you think that's going to taste like? Um, Is it going to be yummy? Oh, yeah. I've never, ever cooked any of anything in here in my life. Faced with the prospect of a dramatic change, it's not long before Vicky's stubborn side reveals itself. The thing is, I wouldn't eat this in a million years. I'm just gonna taste it like that. I don't like it anyway, so. Not what? It's not gonna mash, it's too hard. I don't find that very appetising. Is it ready? Yeah. Can I must it? Why don't you taste them? Tell me what you think. Is it nice? Go and taste. Mm. I'm going to mess. Oh, I'm going to mess it up. Do you like it? Yeah, it's lovely. This is going back to my childhood. This is exactly what I used to do at the dinner table. I think they they would keep saying, you know, try, have a few more mouthfuls, you know, and then I just end up sort of just squishing it all down and sort of moving it around my plate so it looked like I've, I've ate loads, something like that. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, be put in the bin. Mm. 
halfway through the first week and Vicky is showing signs of falling at the first hurdle. Charlotte calls her to London for her first one-on-one -on -one nutrition session. It's really important from this exercise that I really gauge where Vicky's boundaries lie and where we need to move her to and how we're going to do that. It's also really important that Vicky sees those issues as well. With Vicky reluctant to eat vegetables in the confines of her own home, Charlotte is keen to see how she'll cope with a bit of encouragement. Hello. <laughs> is that your first reaction when you um, see this array of foods? Only because I see salmon and I remember my first memory of food, yeah. going off of food with salmon. That's the first thing I've got the okay. memory of. The, the reason that these foods are here particularly is because I wanted to find foods that really plugged holes in your current diet and also tried to make amends for some of the ills in your diet. I want to try you with a cucumber first. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get in there. OK, yeah. that's one of my worst. That's probably you know, that's why you're giving it to me. Oh, very good, OK. I'm just, just not going to smell it. it. Yeah, yeah. smell it. What's your feeling about cucumber? Oh, do you know, even if somebody's got this on their breath, it makes me feel sick. When was the last time you ate this? I've never actually eaten it. Oh, OK. So it might not actually taste the way you believe it tastes? No. OK, then you should taste it to find out, I think. OK. <laughs> do I have to? <laughs> On a scale of one to ten, how much would you say you dislike that? I'd say about five. Oh. That's all right. That's kind of hedging your bets either way, really. Mm-hmm. Let's try you on red pepper. After over two decades of claiming she can't eat vegetables... Actually, it's quite nice. Vicky's positive reaction to the foods... Do you eat the whole thing? Yeah. ...is surprising, to say the least. That's nice. Oh, God, now if I spit... That's a real mouthful. Mm. Having come so far, Charlotte decides to test the true extent of Vicky's boundaries. Right, so what's your thoughts when you see this? I hate fish, and um, I won't even let my husband cook it in the house. Can you cut a piece off? Salmon is one of the dishes that completely put Vicky off food. This is the first time she's come this close to eating it in three decades. I don't think I'm going to like this. But you don't know. <laughs> That's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> it almost seems like she's two people. There's the one who has really boxed herself in into this tiny, constricted, bland diet. And then there seems to be someone in there who's quite curious about things and then quite open-minded when she does try things. So I'm going to be very interested to see where these two people meet. And I think where they meet is where we're going to meet the resistance. Vicky's proved that she can eat vegetables and fish with Charlotte watching over her. But the biggest test will be coping on her own. Charlotte's homework for Vicky is to eat two new veg a day. But it's not long before she demonstrates that the next few weeks won't be easy. I'm going against the wishes of Charlotte this evening. And I'm going to have cheese on my jacket potato this evening. I need to get some cheese this evening. Um, I'm having it with my jacket potato. I feel like an alcoholic. Um... It's like a secret mission off to get the cheese. I have to do it into the cover of darkness. Demonstrating that her problem is less about a phobia and more about mindset, the next day Vicky has her first session with psychologist Felix. He wants to delve into her past and find out where her eating problems first began. So, Vicky, can you tell me a little bit about how your diet is a problem for you in your life? Well, the main problem I have with it is the fact that I can't go out for a meal. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have dinner with my family. Mm -hmm. um, I can't go abroad because I won't like the food. Mm -hmm. um, it, 
every time there's any any family get togethers then I've I've always got to be sort of segregated off and right. to, to get the things that I like. That sounds really constraining, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yourself. Absolutely. Um, but it's it, it is for everybody who who be around me. Mm. To be perfectly honest. So it's tough on you and tough on others as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, see. So it makes sense then just avoid it if it's a negative experience. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. I have been told that um, when my parents went away on holiday, mm. um, I was staying with my nan and I wouldn't eat at all. Um, and, and then apparently when they come back, mm. my dad asked me if I wanted some food and then I would just start eating. Um, and if he was away, apparently I'd just lie on the sofa and and cry, wouldn't do anything until I could speak to him on the phone. Mm -hmm. But I've pretty much got to have my own way about nearly everything. What would happen if you didn't get your own way? I'd be so angry. Because what would it mean to you? Because I wouldn't like it wouldn't have been my decision. Like it's no, it's not even it's not about that. It's that I like what I like. Right. And if somebody changes that, it would be something that would just forever annoy me. When her father was absent, Vicky revealed she would actually go on hunger strikes. That's exactly the time when she started trying to really control her food. And I think unless Vicky's really willing to look at some of those underlying childhood issues, she's unlikely to ever embrace eating new foods. It's the end of the first week, and without Charlotte next to her, the stubborn Vicky is refusing to embrace any kind of changes to her diet. I want pizza. Yeah. yeah. I really do want pizza. <laughs> um, all right, well, how about you save that pizza for another day? Pizza. Why don't you have some... Damien, have some stop trying to... And pizza? <laughs> I bet I took a stir-fry. Some breaded chicken. No. No, All right, OK, um, just try and think outside, you know, the pizza box. Really. I have. I'm just not in the mood to... I'm hungry, I just want to eat some stodgy food and get ice full. Don't order a large one, for a start. <laughs> <laughs> you do get the arse yet? Yeah, I'm going to get really pissed <laughs> off in a minute. Yeah. Well, I've voiced my concerns. <laughs> I am going to order a pizza. I don't feel guilty. I don't feel guilty. I don't feel guilty. I don't feel guilty. Don't feel guilty. Don't feel guilty. Can I order a large cheese and tomato pizza, please? When I'm at that point that I'm hungry and I've made my decision that this is what I want, there's no way I am going to be sold a different food. When I want a pizza and I'm really hungry, I will have one. Um, no stopping me, really. It's the start of week two. Charlotte is concerned that Vicky is losing the commitment needed to conquer her cheese habit, so she's brought her to London for an appointment on Harley Street. Today we're meeting Dr Pixie, and I really hope that what we're going to discuss is going to shock Vicky into understanding the long-term health implications of her diet. Dr Pixie McKenna is a GP with a special interest in eating problems. She's performed an analysis of Vicky's blood and has some serious news for her. I'm very surprised you're looking so well, actually. <laughs> now, we've worked out that you're taking twice the amount of salt that you should be in your yeah. diet. That's a well-known medical fact that that will push up your blood pressure. A cheese-based diet is high in salt and saturated fat. An adult should not consume more than six grams of salt a day. Vicky consumes nearly twice this. This high salt intake puts Vicky at greater risk of high blood pressure. Dr Pixie wants to shock Vicky into action. So she gives her some double vision goggles and makes her dizzy to simulate the symptoms of high blood pressure. Now, you want to step up? <laughs> Just try, we'll, we'll catch Whoa. you. How are you feeling now? Dizzy. 
You could also have nausea, headache, giddiness, sickness, buzzing in your ears, and you'd feel really, really, really unwell. Would you be able to cut a piece of cheese and eat it? No. <laughs> no. Do you feel like you could do much? No, I think I need to lie down. Yeah, that's exactly how you would feel yeah. if you had really high blood pressure. While cheese does have some health benefits, in vast quantities, it can be a killer. A diet high in saturated fat can create a buildup of arterial plaque in the veins, leading to circulatory problems and eventually even stroke or heart disease. We researched and we actually found, especially for you, a picture of a heart of a man in his 40s who had a diet very similar to yours. Now, can you see is that? that? just fat? Bloody hell. So is that actually a layer of fat completely around the heart? That it's is... almost strangling it. Insulating it, you. but strangulating it, yeah. yeah. It's not very nice. It's not very nice, is it? Vicky was very frightened by the fatty heart. Is it enough to get her to change her diet? She's so happy-go-lucky and easygoing. I'm not sure. 24 hours later and the session with Dr Pixie still has Vicky upset, but not about the fatty heart. I wasn't particularly happy about how it went. Um, I felt that the way that I was being spoken to was as if I had complete control of the situation and that I could have eaten a healthy diet off of my own back quite easily and I was just uh, choosing not to. I'm well aware that, uh, of my, my problem and um, there's just, for some reason, I've been unable to go and eat vegetables um, and meats and everything else. So I sort of felt that she didn't take that into consideration. I felt like I was a bit, just a bit more lazy. Um, that's how it came across to me. Over halfway into the process, and Vicky is still failing to let go of her old habits. Concerned that they have less than two weeks to inspire any kind of change, Charlotte and Felix meet up in London to compare notes. She's not doing the homework particularly well. I mean, she will eat lots of different foods when she's with me, but when it comes to being on her own and doing her homework, there's such a resistance to change there. She's still got this childhood mentality. Yeah and we need to really move her from childhood to adulthood. Absolutely, and I don't think she realised fully how difficult this was going to be and how much effort she was going to have to put in. We are really going to have to push her outside her comfort zone, and yeah. I think there's a danger that we could push her so far that she shuts down, really. Charlotte and Felix believe that Vicky's relationship with food is trapped in childhood. For her second healthy hamper challenge, Charlotte wants to bring out the parent in Vicky. Oh, bloody hell, I bet it's recipes. She's not only got to prepare meals for herself, but for daughter Ella and husband Damien as well. Right, you have been provided with eight recipes. Your aim for this week, week is to cook a meal for Ella each day for the selection of recipes provided. Cooking a family meal will be a first for Vicky, having always relied on husband Damien to do all the cooking. Salmon and prawns? No way. I don't think I'd eat any of those. Everything in here, personally, this, you know, I know it's for Ella, everything's very chunky, which I don't like. These are all completely different things now, so the control aspect sort of comes in and I just... I feel like I don't want to try it. I don't want to try them. Especially if I'm cooking because I'm rubbish at cooking. This is the first time she's ever cooked for me. It is a massively significant moment because from this point on, Muggins isn't doing all the cooking. Damien, like, can you just turn off Damien's thoughts? This is for me. I think you'd be right. I think you'd be right with that. Do you want to make it for me? No. I want you to make it for me. Bloody hell. For her first meal, she plumps for vegetable chilli. Mm. 
My major problem and battle with vegetables has always been it being lumpy, not taste, texture. That is just horrible. Well, you've just got the hump because you don't want to do it. That's, that's bottom line. I hate food. I know you do. But that's why we're here, Vicky, you know? That was Vicky's typical reaction that she normally has to food. Uh, I've been surprised it's been quite held in for so long. Uh, she's managed to stop herself from doing it, I guess, up until now. Um, but you could see as soon as she was set the challenge today uh, for the week that she was determined almost to, to set herself to a failure because of her mindset. At this moment in time, I, I just don't want to do any more cooking. I don't. I'd rather not do it, to be honest, at this moment in time, because you know, it's all right if things got a bit worse as it went along. But they, you know, I just think that that is just to that's going to set me right back. <laughs> Felix believes Vicky's problems with food are rooted in her childhood, so wants to find out more. Hi, Paul. Hi, I'm Felix. He heads to nice Swindon to meet up with her father, coming, Paul. Felix. Thank you. This particular photo, the teacher or whoever was taking mm. the photograph told her to pose like that, because I was quite... I said, well, that, Vicky, that's not your pose. It's very angelic. That's it? right, yes, yeah, so and that wasn't Vicky. This is when she's in her teens now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've got a finger up there, so, you know, although you're taking a photograph of me. <laughs> As Vicky's mother Eleanor passed away three years ago, it's left to Paul to fill in the missing pieces. Well, I, I suppose when Vicky was born, mm. um, being the second child, I was rather hoping it would be a boy. Right. So for a, a millisecond, may I add, I was a little disappointed. Okay. <laughs> However, um, Vicky didn't disappoint me to a certain extent because mm. she was into cars, little cars, garages and things like that, and mm. she would be fighting boys. So, to right. a certain extent, that she had the traits, I thought, right. <laughs> of a boy. And, right. and then I, I spent then mm. a little more attention to her. And we've got a very glamorous photo here. Yes, Vicky right. suddenly mm. decided that, that she wanted to do modelling. Oh, I, I think she throws herself, whatever, whatever project she's in, mm. or whatever she wants to do, she throws herself 100% into it. Can, can you tell me, what were your earliest memories of Vicky Sunny starting to have sort of slightly unusual eating patterns? Yes, I, I suppose I, I can remember, and I have to say vaguely, because mm. um, I was at work, um, you know, I had a sort of long working day, and um, my job also meant that I was away mm. for, for periods of time. However, I, I can recollect that, you know, there was um, a, a, a concern about her eating, whether she was eating sufficiently enough to mm. sustain herself. Because there was some mention that Vicky would go on these kind of hunger strikes when you're away. Yes, yes. Me. I understood whenever my phone call came in mm. to the home, there was Vicky who had been lying on the settee all day, mm. wouldn't move. Mm. Then suddenly, when that phone call came mm. through, and it was me, she became animated and grabbed mm. the phone, and there she was, mm. talking away. Right. As soon as the conversation was finished, she would just go back and lie down on the settee. Mm. Bit of a hard situation, my father had a little girl yes. too. And yes. I think part of me would be secretly delighted if my daughters were <laughs> kicking up a fuss, because yes. I'm not there. You know, it felt good that, you know, that somebody so small mm. would, would, would be missing you, and would, mm. would understand mm. that, you know. Yeah. A lot of Vicky's problems do stem from her childhood, and especially around the times Paul was away on work. I think what Vicky seems to have done is started, started to control her eating as a way of getting attention to make up for the loss of her father. And now that she has her own family, that's really getting in the way from what she really wants to do. With Vicky failing to embrace the challenge of cooking for her family, Charlotte has arranged to meet her at a soup kitchen in Reading. She wants to inspire her by getting her to cook for the homeless. I'm really hoping that today Vicky starts to understand how nurturing cooking can be and that when she starts to cook for herself, understand the process 
of making food and giving it to other people, that she connects that with nourishing and enjoyment and pleasure. Charlotte sets her to work. Whoa. On making a nourishing ministering soup she can serve to the homeless for lunch. Do you think this is something Ella would like? Yeah, yeah, she would. And she'd be open to trying this? Oh, yeah, yeah. And would she enjoy making it with you? Yeah. I suspect that if you made this with Ella, then you would get enjoyment out of this process as well, and that it, it would help you. I think she could really help you move forward. Mm. I am going to start setting time aside at the weekends a bit more, because we need oh, a bit yeah. more family time, so... Yes. You know, maybe it would be something that I can start doing as part of a Sunday dinner, you know, yeah. something for the, a soup or something. And my, um, well, Damien can cook the, the roast. I've always sort of looked at food as a real negative experience. But today it was, you know, it was quite an honour, I suppose, to be able to cook for people and to know what I was doing was a, a real positive impact on a, somebody else's life. Back at home and with a renewed sense of enthusiasm. Mwah! I love you, Mummy. I love you too. Vicky attempts to make her family a stir fry. <laughs> and completely fails. That's horrible. Okay. The noodles are okay. It smells like. It does smell like a bin. No, mine is bigger. Mummy. Ah, oh, that is disgusting. What do you think of it? I like stir fry. Really? Can I get to it? I'm not sure. Excuse me. That's horrible. And it's gone cold. I don't it's think I like cold. stir fry. With their final challenge looming in less than a week, Felix believes the only way to cure Vicky is to tackle her control issues head on. He feels the best way to do this is to strap her to the wings of this plane and launch her 500 feet into the air. She's going to be in a situation of high stress, she's going to have no control, but I'm hoping at the end of it she realises it can be a positive experience for her. OK, Vicky, so... Oh, my God. This is your next challenge, and... This is what I want you to do. How do you feel about that? Fucking what? You're going to be up there where that lady is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Once a lifetime experience. Are you up for it? Yeah. Well done, Vicky. Well done. <laughs> I know you can do this. I have faith in you. So let's get you kitted up. Oh, and then you're no. going to have an amazing experience and learn something really positive from it. I've just been to the toilet, so it should be okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's always useful. <laughs> OK. For me to do this today is absolutely massive. Right, look at you strapped in. OK. Right foot and then step up. Uh, I've got so many layers on, I can't get my leg up. <laughs> Bloody hell. OK, so one arm hips down here, one arm around the wire. By doing this, I think what I'll achieve is being able to put my the controls given to somebody else. Are you excited? F***ing myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be holding on for dear life. If I can do this, I'll be able to do pretty much anything. Woo -hoo -hoo! Well, hey, I think something of this magnitude is a kind of breakthrough moment, because if Vicky's willing to do this and just to trust in the process and just see what happens, then then that really is something of a, of a landmark.
is actually giving the signal to do slightly more dangerous stuff. So the plane's tilting and it's dipping, but she's really going for it. See, therapy can also be a lot of fun. Oh, wow, look at this, look at this. Oh my gosh. What's lump of food in comparison to something like this? Amazing. <laughs> Me too, what you were. Exactly. You're amazing. Well done. That was really, really brilliant. Oh. So, Vicky, after braving the sky on this plane, how do you feel about braving lumpy food? I think I can go for it now. Yeah. Completely, yeah. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. One of those experiences that you think, if I can do this, I can pretty much do anything. So, um, amazing, amazing day. Morning, Vicky receives her next healthy hamper challenge from Charlotte. <laughs> For the next seven days, I want you to surrender control of your life to someone else. From now on, Damien will be in charge. He will decide what you eat on a daily basis and will also and also any activities he would like to, you to do. Come on. <laughs> what I want you to learn from this exercise is that it's okay to not always be in control of everything around you. Good luck. Well, you can eat what I eat now. No, 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 it doesn't mean I have to eat, like, steak. I do believe it says, from now on, Damien will be in charge. Yeah, but... Full stop. We all know that men aren't fully in charge. We're just giving you a little bit of the rain. Sorry, should I just read that again? <laughs> from now on, Damien will be in charge. Your first task is to... Shh. <laughs> Uh, I'm chuffed to bits with it, really. That's a, that's a really good... Um, it's going to be a good week for me. I don't like cooking, so... OK, but it's not just about the cooking, is it? It's about letting go. I am letting go. I'm letting you cook. <laughs> yeah, you have to do what I say for the next seven days. I Result. You... <laughs> <laughs> you pass me the remote, please? <laughs> Uh, tonight, I thought Vicky would be introduced to curry. Ugh, do you like it? That? That's like vinegar. Look, my neck, there is a big old. Do you know I don't like lumps? <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> sort of feel that that might be a bit of a lump. Next up is homemade Stilton and mushroom tart. Right, babe, what's in there? Stilton and mushroom. Oh, no. Right then, Magic, should we put some salad on? No. Just a little no, bit? No, no. No. The meal that Damien cooked for me today was, um, it was really nice, actually. Over the last sort of couple of weeks, I've found it quite negative and hard work and stressful. Um, but today, it sort of showed me that I could have a meal, a new meal, um, of things I've never had before, and to enjoy it. <laughs> Vicky continues to build on the success of Damien's choices. Well, I forgot the filming of the preparation of the food, but I have had a roast dinner. This is Damien who cooked the roast dinner, and that's his plate. <laughs> and here's mine. And as you can see, I have bet pretty much everything on there. Let's go for it. So I can't believe what a fantastic result that is. Um, she's done incredibly well um, on that, and I'm, I'm stunned. You know, it's like an inspirational moment for me. If I can, if I can conquer that, and I like it, I think it will be all leaps and bounds from here. Vicky's finally embracing a more varied diet, but Felix wants to address the root of her problems with food. Vicky has repressed the emotion she felt as a child, and Felix feels this is holding her back. Felix has asked Vicky's dad to choose the place to come and talk about the past. The Silent Valley is a cemetery near where Vicky's mother grew up and where her immediate family members are buried. Vicky's never actually spoken to her father about her problems with eating. And I know that a lot of Vicky's anxiety around eating was because her father was absent, working away a lot. 
And so today I'm hoping that by bringing her here to this special neutral place, they can feel comfortable and safe enough talking about their feelings, about their relationships in the past when Vicky's problems started surfacing. And after that, I'm hoping they'll get some sort of closure on what happened and be able to move forward. OK, so Paul and Vicky, um, here we're in a place of special significance to you both. We want to get some closure for what went on at the time. Even though it's happened in the past, it's never too late to get some new clarity on it. During that time that Vicky developed this problematic relationship with food, yeah. you're working away a lot. That's right. What is it you needed, age four, to hear from dad that if you heard this, you wouldn't have needed to dig your heels in and react that way? I think having stress at four is very difficult to to handle and mm. you, you know, I suppose, and I was quite an aggressive kid, wasn't I? <laughs> and I think that's probably where mm. a lot of it stemmed mm. from, is just, you know. If I had my time over again, it would have been more sensitive mm. to the issues of the family. If I could have looked forward and seen that, we would have been very positive and done something about it. Mm. And we spent more energy and made it more of a priority. So, yes, if I had time back again, I certainly would have spent a lot more time in... Mm. Mm dealing with what was a fussy eating um, and, and taking more, a serious view of it. So th there is a concession from Paul that had to work, mm. but I do apologize for not being around. Mm. And what your dad is saying now mm. is in hindsight, I'll have more of an input in that. What would that feel like differently? I think it would just, uh, you know, be an elevating mm. feeling, I suppose. Uh, my life wouldn't be so, um, I do control things because I wouldn't like to think that I'd have a negative experience at the hands of somebody else. Um, so I think it, you know, it would just be, it'd make life a lot easier for me. Just to go and be that process today, you can just have a hug and let that forgiveness just be expressed. Vicky is trying to lay her problems to rest, so her father is also inspired to take a step at embracing the future. Back here, there was always something I, I wanted to do, but never got round to it. And it's been three years since Eleanor died, and this is where she came from. And I wanted to scatter some of her ashes here to return her to her home. But it, feel, it does feel liberating, it definitely. I um, feel that, I don't know, the past has gone to bed, I suppose, in a way. So I think the penny may have finally dropped for Figgy. It's never been the food itself that's caused the problem. It's the circumstances in which those anxieties rose that's always been the problem. After four weeks, Vicky is at the end of her dietary makeover. Felix and Charlotte invite Vicky and her husband Damien to London, where they have one final challenge for her. Oh, we're holding hands. Oh, good. Hello. 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 Hi. 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 Hi there. Hi. Let's see you. Hello. Let's see you. Hello. Hello. Hi, Damien. Nice to meet you. Now, I know it's your wedding anniversary today. It is, it is yeah. And I also know that you've never been abroad together or had a real romantic meal together. That's true. <laughs> so your final challenge is that you're going to Paris and Damien is going to choose a restaurant for you to eat in. Nice. Damien is also going to choose the meal that you have. No <laughs> cheese or pizza. That's important. <laughs> it's good. Uh, and you're going to enjoy it together. Oh, cool. <laughs> I wonder what she's going to eat. I know. How far will he push her? Mm. Oh, this will be the first time Vicky and Damien have ever travelled abroad together, or even simply been out for a romantic meal. Arriving in Paris, first stop for Vicky is not the sights, but determining what food they serve. 
they got, if they got vegetarian? You're in France for game. So I can't eat anything vegetarian? Well, you can, but the French, you know, they, they think vegetarianism seems a bit wishy-washy. So what am I supposed to eat, then? Well, this is kind of the point, isn't it? Which one looks the worst for you on that? Uh, snails. Snails. Or the oysters. Or the oysters. OK, so what about the sea urchins? And I'm not, I'm not eating. No, no. OK, well, look, I have some langoustine. You know, it's no, prawns. No, no, no. Shrimp. No, no, no. I don't like fish. It's not fish, it's seafood. It's different. It's That's not, that isn't a fish, is it? Not thing. I don't like anything like that. Please. <laughs> After two hours, Damien finally decides on a restaurant Vicky approves of, serving Asian and Mediterranean cuisine. Unfortunately, all in French. I don't understand a lot of it. Uh, Vous avez un uh, vegetarian? Yeah. Yeah. Just um, skis. Bowl of vegetables. So. Bowl of vegetables. Just a bowl of eggs. Vegetables. Right. So you wouldn't go for sausage, you wouldn't go for beef, you're not going to go for fish. So I think that, well, it just whittles it down to chicken, really, doesn't it? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Want to try that? Let's go for that, then. Pour moi, la saucisse de moto. Oui. La poulet. Oui. Poulet pour la mademoiselle. Oui. I, th I think you'd be all right. I think you'd be pleasantly surprised. Well, I've got faith in you, so I, I think you'll be able to do it. As long as you just set your mind set. Salut. Salut. For the first time in over two decades, Vicky has ordered a meal that doesn't involve cheese or pizza. <laughs> Having initially resisted changing, will Charlotte and Felix's makeover be the beginning of a new dietary dawn? Yeah, thank okay. You. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, there we go, look, yeah. Oh, it's good. So you've got, there's apples in here. So you've got apples, yeah, you've got rice. There's probably, I think that's pineapple or something like that. doesn't really do it for me, although I could eat it. It's about being able to enjoy other foods. It's not a question of just dismissing it as, no, it's not as good as pizza. Is it nice in its own right, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah, it's OK. It's OK. OK. It's not, um... Would you like to try some black lentils? No, thank you. Okay. No, I don't, I don't want to try any. I'm really dizzy, so I don't want to be forced food. No some more, sir. I'm not eating anymore. Right, so do you want to just try a little bit? No, I don't. I just, you don't keep asking me, babe. You're not going to have any more curry. Will no, you try uh, it? No, Damien, why are you pushing me? If I say I don't want something, why have we got to keep going because over it? Because I wanted it? to try something else on the menu. And no. that, that was why I particularly chose this one, because I thought you would try the lentil. Sorry. I'm a little bit annoyed that she, she backed out of trying the lentils. Uh, but as soon as I started to push, that was it. There's no way she was going to change her mind. I mean, today I've taken out that I don't want to go out for a meal again. <sighs> All it is, I suppose, is that if you don't like something or, you, you know, like, uh, you, you try it, you don't like it. It's a continuous thing. I suppose it's more, it's frustrating. It's every time, it's like a waste of time, really. Mine was lovely. Despite Vicky's despondency, the fact that the couple are eating out at all on their wedding anniversary in Paris is success enough for Damien. 
I just want to say, um, well done for getting this far. I know your final challenge was one of the hardest that you've had to do. Um, but don't beat yourself up about it, you know, that was, it was baby steps. You know, we achieved what we wanted to do. We actually went out for a meal together and we've actually gone to a foreign country together as well, OK? Do you know what? Sometimes I, I look back and I think I've come really, really far. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Happy anniversary. Thank you. And then other days I don't think I've moved at all. And where I want to be is a million miles away from where I am now. And, and it's going to take me a long time to get where I want to be. Two weeks after her final challenge. Has Vicky strayed off the path to healthy eating forever? The week after, I, I, I got to admit that it just went to pot and I just went back to pizzas and cheese. But despite Vicky slipping back into some of her old eating habits, she has introduced some new foods into her diet. I have some leafy salads, um, I have some carrots, and have some jacket potatoes. Still having the cheese, but with a, a more balanced diet. Vicky is now introducing fresh vegetables into all of her daily meals, something she hasn't done for over 28 years. I think it's wonderful that Vicky's come this far. It will make a massive difference to the family because we can now concentrate on enjoying what we're doing instead of having to worry about Vicky's eating. From where I was beginning to where I am now, um, I'm having vegetables on my plate, so I'm eating things I never ate before. So it's, you know, it's been an amazing thing, really.